Great. Hi, everyone. Um, we want to warmly welcome you all to our Ingredion Early Talent Panel event, which will overview uh, different opportunities in our business offices. My name is Megan Dilley, and I'm the Program Manager Early Talent here at Ingredion, and I will be serving as your host and event moderator during our event tonight. All right, so before we do introductions, I wanna make mention that we will be raffling off three $15 gift cards for this event. So if you're an event attendee and you remain online for the entire event tonight and stay with us, um, you will be entered into the raffle. And after the event tonight, um, we will randomly draw out three names and winners will be notified by email um, before the end of this week. So with that, um, I will introduce our panel. Um, join with me are four of our great Ingredion team members from various Ingredion functional groups. And I'd like them to each take a moment to introduce themselves, where they work, and what role they do here at Ingredion. So Erica, let's start with you. Thanks, Megan, um, and thanks for having me. My name is Erica Jenkins. I am the HR generalist here at Ingredion. Um, I've been with Ingredion for about three and a half years at this point. Um, I sit in our Westchester office, um, our headquarters, which is about 15 or so miles west of um, downtown. Um, when we're not in a pandemic, that's where you can find me. Um, I've been doing um, HR for about um, six years. So I um, graduated, I went to U of I at Urbana-Champaign, graduated there in 2014. So um, from a responsibility standpoint, really from an HR perspective, as a generalist, I'm that frontline support person for our employees. Um, any questions that they have about um, programs, policies, or procedures that we have um, at Ingredion, I'm that one face, um, one name that they can remember um, to go to for any questions that they have in that sphere. Um, so I partner with our COEs in those specific um, business functions within HR um, to make sure that we are um, able to best provide a response or an answer for our employees. Um, so that's really one huge main point of my job responsibilities, um, but I have a second sort of responsibility from a HR operations standpoint. So I support um, a client group or business unit um, within Ingredion, um, and primarily I support our customer support group. Um, so I've been doing that for um, the larger bulk of my time with Ingredion. Um, and so what that really means is from a um, strategic HR standpoint, I support our talent in that group from employee relations issues to um, recruiting, um, to workforce planning, um, and really helping be really a champion for the employee um, as well as the organization. So in a nutshell, that's what um, HR work looks like and my career thus far. Thanks, Erica, for that overview. Austin, we will um, have you introduce yourself next. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Austin Tank. I'm a supply chain analyst with Ingredion. I've been at the company for about two years now. Uh, prior to that, I graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And so as I mentioned, I'm a supply chain analyst. And so what me and my coworkers do is we provide analytical support to the North America supply chain team. Specifically within supply chain, my current focus is in our truck and rail network. And my main uh, objective with supporting the truck and rail network is to create visibility mostly through tools such as Power BI or Tableau. And also uh, working on analyzing different processes and uh, improving the business. Awesome. Thank you, Austin. All right, Anna, I'll let you go next. Hi everyone, I'm Anna Mondragon. I've been with Ingredion for over a little over four years now. Um, I started in customer service as an associate and I was promoted to a specialist last year. Um, but prior to that, I graduated from Roosevelt University in the city. I graduated in 2015. Um, so with customer service, it's a lot of different hats, but mainly it's order entry. So we're getting orders from our customers and we're sending them into our SAP systems, and then that feeds over to our plants and everybody else product management. So they see what our customers needs are. So we fulfill those as they are requesting. We are building relationships with our customers and then also with our ingredient colleagues in different um, positions and such. And then we're tracking down orders. So it's a little bit of logistics in there too, tracking orders, making sure ETAs are 
you know, what the customer requested and just kind of like that. Thanks, Anna. And finally, Christian. Hello, everybody. Hi, my name is Christian. I'm a senior tax analyst at Ingredion. I've been with Ingredion for a little bit over three years now. Um, and prior to that, I was actually in a public accounting firm. So I have about five, six years of tax experience. Um, prior to that, I, I graduated from Northern Illinois University uh, with my bachelor's and master's. Um, I'm also a licensed CPA, if anybody has any questions about um, getting their CPA license or anything like that. Um, with regards to um, just uh, what I do at Ingredium, I'm part of the domestic tax team. So we handle basically any uh, broadly the domestic tax compliance uh, and filing of uh, the federal and state tax returns at Ingredium. All right, thanks for those nice introductions, um, panel members. Uh, before we get started with our actual panel portion of the event tonight, I do want to take a moment to give a high level overview of Ingredion for those of you who might not be as familiar. Um, so Ingredion as a company is a $6 billion um, ing global ingredient solutions provider. Um, and as many of our panelists today mentioned, we are right outside uh, Chicago, Illinois in the suburbs of Westchester. Um, we do serve customers in a lot of different countries, over 120 um, to be exact. And in short, um, we turn grains and fruits and vegetables and other plant-based materials into different value-added ingredient solutions for a lot of different industries. Um, food and beverage is probably our largest, but animal nutrition, brewing, and the industrial markets are also areas where you would find our ingredients. Um, our purpose is really to bring the potential of people, nature, and technology together to make life better. Um, so without further ado, um, we are going to talk about careers at Ingredion within our business groups. Um, so our goal tonight is to make this session as open as possible and give you guys many opportunities to ask questions during the second half of the session. Um, so I'll mention it again. If you guys do have questions, feel free to enter them in the Q&A portion of the Zoom or um, in the chat as well. We will be monitoring both. So let's begin um, with Erica. So um, Erica, looking back when you started your career, how did your earlier career choices lead you to where you are today? Yeah, so when I think about like your career choices or my career choices, anyone's career choice, um, I would say that you should really let your interests guide you. Um, and so I took a class in high school, a psychology class, um, and that really was my first kickoff point into the HR space. Um, when I think about, um, I, I was a, afforded an HR internship um, in college. And so um, in that internship, I was able to um, be in our talent management group um, from an HR perspective. And so in that group, um, I, I primarily uh, recruited. So it was a talent man management and talent acquisition position. And so I started off as a recruiter. I thought that was cool. I like to talk to people. I like to meet new people. Um, I think that you have to be passionate about the organization that you work for to be a recruiter. And so um, really being able to express to individuals who don't know the company, my excitement for, for working there um, got, me, got me in that space. And so I did that for the first half of my career thus far. Um, but one thing that I just, I just learned about myself was that um, from a recruiting standpoint, and nothing against recruiters, but um, for compliance reasons, you typically have very similar conversations. Um, and I was like, that's not really my jam. Again, being true to who I am, um, that was really when I started having the appropriate conversations with management um, about what opportunities existed at that organization. Um, and I, I was able to um, uh, find interest in a generalist role. However, location for that was not ideal. I'm a city girl um, and this was in the middle of nowhere in Mississippi, so that's not my life. So again, staying true to who I am, um, that led me to start looking again within the Chicago land limits. And so I came to Ingredion and in a generalist role, what that affords um, a young professional is that ability really to connect to the other HR functions um, or yeah, functional groups within HR. And so you're able to 
you know, sit down and have conversations with those in the compensation team or the benefits team. Um, after those conversations, I was like, nope, numbers, not for me really. So um, that's how I kind of was able to start eliminating like options for me. Um, and so when I think about, you know, the conversations that I've, you know, had with like the talent management group um, or other groups, it's just, it's, they're guiding me into um, truly understanding myself and I'm getting opportunities to continue to understand myself um, to make the appropriate decisions within um, the HR space and what I'd like to do for my career. And so um, most recently, I've really kind of found myself highly passionate about the diversity and inclusion space. Um, and so in um, at Ingredion, we have a functional um, group within HR that's diversity equity and inclusion focused. And so um, I'm really trying to embrace that field and network with the individual who's in that role. Um, and even in my my day to day responsibilities, I'm able to um, keep my eyes peeled for those kinds of opportunities or initiatives um, and, and create those opportunities so I can better convey my passion and my skill set in that area. And so Really, when, when I think about my career choices, I've always been someone who's motivated um, by what I'm interested in. And really, when you think about what you're interested in, that makes you the most pro um, productive, that makes you the most engaged type of employee. Um, and then you'll never work a day in your life, as they say. So um, really, that is my... Um, when I think about my career path and really what's led me here, it's just about staying true to yourself and finding what you're interested in, so. Thanks, Erica, I appreciate that. And just to add a little more context, we do a lot of diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives at Ingredion, and Erica actually leads our um, Alliance of Black Employees Business Resource Group, and I know um, many of our other panelist members are, are also part of um, our Women of Ingredient group, as well as our Network of Early Talent Next event or group as well. And so um, there's a lot of different opportunities for you to kind of spread your, spread your wings and, and get involved in a lot of different things at Ingredient. So very good. All right, Christian, uh, we will go to you next. So you have been working with Ingredient um, in our Westchester headquarters for a few years now in the tax department. Um, so what is one piece of practical advice you would give to someone considering working in at some sort of accounting or finance related function in a corporate company like Ingredient? Sure. So I would say um, as a student, I mean, it's um, making sure, um, uh, and I think it's very important to take advantage of all the opportunities uh, that you can as a student to network um, and learn about the different career opportunities that are within accounting and finance. Um, in a corporate uh, environment like Ingredient, there's a lot of uh, different roles that you can take within accounting and finance. You could either be doing tax like I'm doing, you could be working in internal audit, uh, you could be working in, in corporate accounting, right? And, and um, so um, that, as a student, I think that's really hard. How, how do you really know um, what is the best thing for you? Um, and the best way to really know is really to, to first, I guess, uh, talk to people, right? Professionals when you're at school, uh, if they come over, ask them lots of questions so that you get familiar with what their responsibilities are um, and what is kind of expected um, in that position and to see really if it's a good fit for you. Um, I would also encourage, um, if possible, um, make sure that if you, there's internship opportunities, um, to apply for those and um, kind of try it out. I think there's that's probably the best way for you to learn whether um, you know tax or audit or accounting is is really a, a fit for you. Um, I was lucky enough, um, and I I think Erica kind of touched on that um, that I was able I got an uh, internship when I was a student um, in an accounting role, and then I also did an internship in tax. So that's kind of how I decided um, which path I wanted to take. Um, so my advice, um, right, to kind of sum it up, is really to kind of um, talk to people, um, and if possible, right, uh, apply for those internship opportunities, um, and that's kind of the best way to know um, what you really want to do within accounting. Thanks, Christian. 
All right, Austin, picking off, piggybacking off of Christian's comments, um, how has been working in a couple of roles now while with Ingredion and Supply Chain really helped you develop as an early career professional thus far? Yeah, thanks, Megan. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I've been with Ingredion for two years. And the first year I was a logistics planner. And then for the past year, I've been a supply chain analyst. And so what those two roles have allowed me to do is that it's allowed me to see different sides of our supply chain. So as a logistics planner, uh, you plan the day-to-day -day operations of outbound shipments from our plants to customers. So it's, um, it's looking every day what open orders there are and working through any issues that occur either with the customer or with our carrier network. And so you're really focused on the day-to-day -day operations and actually delivering product to customer. And then in the second role, which I, uh, which I was promoted to about a year ago, um, the supply chain analyst is more working on the business. So rather than looking at the day -day operations, you get that data, the data that the day-to-day -day operations uh, puts out. And so you look at that and you work to create additional visibilities with that information and what insight can we gain to make life easier for people in operations. And then also, of course, looking at cost and service opportunities within that information. So it's really just seen, allowed me to see both sides of, you know, working day to day, building connections with people with the plant, um, understanding processes, and also looking at a high level, looking at initiatives, different projects and things in that nature. Great. Thanks, Austin. And that kind of leads us to our next question. So, Anna, um, thinking about your role here at Ingredient and customer support, um, what are some of the ways that you're able um, to help make a difference in our business with our customers? Sure. So, some of Ingredient's core values include be preferred and care first. So, I really think that customer service makes a difference for our customers because we truly do live by those values, specifically those two. You know, be preferred. We care about our customers. It's not just always a business transaction. We do care about these customers placing orders. So it's they know that we care, and because we care, I think that they choose to stay with us and they choose ingredient and um, for their needs. And then so, as far as like with when the pandemic hit, and even before that, when there's natural disasters, as far as like hurricanes on the east coast or fires on the west coast, we we're reaching out to our customers, we're there. So, you know, we're asking if they're okay, if their business needs have changed, just kind of being proactive and, you know, showing them that we care about their business, but we also care about them. I think that that sets us aside from other companies just because we care. We do care. And that brings me back to you, Erica. Um, working in human resources, you're able to help and support all of our employees, um, you know, in the functions that you support in our company. So what would be an important piece of advice you'd give someone coming into a company like Ingredient to ensure that they're successful? Yeah, so I mean, in, in regards to advice, um, I'll start all the way at like the interview portion. Um, when you're interviewing, I think it's really important to ask questions. I think that that's a missed opportunity when you're not asking questions um, because it's just as much of a the company interviewing you as you are interviewing the company. And so when you are asking questions, you're one, showing your future employer that you are specifically interested in that organization, right? So you're asking questions related to um, that company in, in regards to like Anna was just talking about some of their values because you wanna make sure again, you have similar values when you're going into an organization. Um, so you know from like outside of role and responsibility that as an organization, the type of people that they employ, the, the type of policies they put into place, the type of programs that they have, um, that they are aligned and will fulfill you as an individual. Um, and then you're asking questions about like business goals or department, you know, goals, what are their strategic priorities, um, because that then showcases your ability to think ahead, right? That shows cases your um, ability to really try and understand, you know, the organization, um, again, showing that you're committed and dedicated. Um, asking questions that are around, you know, your trajectory in the role, right? So if you're in this role, what are your, uh, what is the company expecting you to um, do within X amount of time within the first six months, um, at a year, at two years, so that you're understanding that the work that you're doing um, 
is one, something that you would like to be doing, and two, something that you feel, um, again, fits into your big picture for where you want your career to go, so it makes sense for you um, as well. And then I would just show your value. Um, we as a company, Ingredion, we are um, very much so committed to innovation. Um, so when you are answering questions, you are showing that you are bringing, you know, your problem solver hat to the um, to the center, right? You're, the company is going to get value out of you because your approach to solving problems is very thought through. You're articulating that really well, um, and your solution um, is creative and you know um, has a big impact for the organization. So, um, in regards to advice for um, how to be successful in, an, in a company like us. It really is being innovative. It is asking questions. It is being a good problem solver. So even from like the interview portion, if you're showing all those skill sets, um, you'll have those um, uh, contributions to contribute when you are um, an employee and that would make you successful for us. Thanks, Erica. That's some really great advice. Okay, so let's shift gears a little bit. Um, I'm going to ask a question to the entire panel, and Austin, we're going to start with you. Um, what would you say are the most rewarding aspects of, of your role um, that you're in today? Sure. Um, so for me personally, in the supply chain analyst, chain analyst role, um, I get a lot of satisfaction about going through the process of solving a problem. So for me, it's you know looking at a problem, understanding it, and then bringing together people from different business. So a bunch of subject matter experts that kind of are related to the problem. So getting a bunch of people together in the room, getting ideas or uh, ideation session is what we call them. So having like an ideation session, developing solutions to that problem, and then going through the process of actually uh, creating solutions and then implementing. And so it sounds really easy when you explain it, you know, in a minute, but in reality, it takes months and months and months. So it's not great at first, but once you get past that, it's still rewarding to think about where you were a year ago and then where you are today. And you can just see the value that you've added through going through that process. Thanks, Austin. All right, Anna, what about you? Yeah, so I think initially when I first started with Ingredion, it was really rewarding to just see that, you know, the order that I placed, that Pepsi's on the shelf because I probably had a hand in it. And so that's really cool to see your products that you sell go into these big names. But I think now, you know, as the years have gone by and I've been here, I think now the, the thing that's most rewarding is the relationships that I've built, you know, with our customers and also with my colleagues as well. I mean, I talk to some of these people I work with more than some of my family. So it's really, it's rewarding to build those relationships with both our customers and our colleagues here at Ingredion. Great. Thank you. All right, Christian, what do you think is the most rewarding aspect of your role here at Ingredion? Sure. So I would say personally for me is uh, knowing that um, I have a direct impact to uh, ingredients business. Um, and I know that might sound a little weird, right, coming from like the tax department. But I mean, just I was thinking, you know, like two years ago, um, tax reform happened. Not sure if a lot of people, if you guys might have heard that, but um, at Ingredient, that was kind of a big deal. And for the tax department, that was a big deal because it kind of gave us the opportunity um, to, I guess, first of all, right, learn all the rules and regulations that came from. Um, from that, from tax reform, but also kind of see how those apply to Ingredion and how we can kind of, um, you know, make the make the best decision um, for the for Ingredion's business uh, model and all of that kind of, you know, from processes um, also changing, all that kind of directly impacts Ingredion's bottom line, um, you know, in tax savings at the end of the day. So to me, that's kind of what, you know, gives me, I guess, the most satisfaction knowing that I have a direct impact um, to the business. Thanks, Christian. And finally, Erica, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I know you said what's the most um, rewarding, but I have a couple, so um, just bear with me. Um, when I think about being in the HR space, I think about like what keeps me within the HR space. And I, I feel like from a talent acquisition standpoint, I really appreciate providing opportunities to individuals and connecting them into careers that they you know, are excited about, connecting them to organizations that will definitely excel them in their you know, career aspirations, you know, seeing 
just someone being happy, coming in and having work and creating a life for themselves. I, I appreciate, you know, being able to have a hand in doing that for someone who um, re needs it and wants it. And then um, from like a, an employee who is currently within the organization, I appreciate being able to help them advance, whether that's connecting them to a, a resource, um, networking, a training opportunity, um, whatever that really looks like. I, I like having a hand in helping someone achieve, you know, what they are um, hoping to with their career. Um, and then again, more recently, the more that I get involved in this segment of the business, um, the diversity and inclusion work is really something that clearly hits home for me. I think that being a part of an organization that is committed to um, our diversity strategies is amazing. And, you know, I, I think about all the ways that I can help, you know, people who are typically marginalized or disadvantaged. Um, and I'm, you know, doing it in my day to day job. Um, I'm making sure that I'm making a way for individuals who have, you know, been um, marginalized to have a, a platform to speak and have opportunities that they're receiving. And so I really appreciate um, being able to give back in that way as well. So um, those are my three reasons. Thanks, Erica. I can never, I can never do one either. <laughs> it's always got to be a handful. <laughs> all right. So on the flip side, um, this is another um, all pan panelist question, um, and we'll start with Anna. What parts of your role are challenging, and how do you manage those challenges and possible stressors that can develop? Um, sure. So with customer service, I think probably one of the challenging things is just kind of communicating you know things like delays and inconveniences that are towards the customer so if the customer if something's delayed or it's not going to get there as the customer had requested that's always something that's challenging to get over and just kind of like you're kind of stuck because you're not able to do too much at certain points but the customer is upset so just trying to see it from their eyes and you know be empathetic to a point where you understand where they're coming from and it's their business just kind of getting over that thank you all right, Christian, what would you say? Sure, so I would say uh, for me, um, and I guess not just in tax, but maybe uh, broadly speaking in accounting finance, is kind of having a um, really high busy season or right uh, workload um, during, um, I would say probably the beginning of the year. Um, and then just kind of knowing that you're gonna be real busy at the beginning of the year and then at each quarter, um, and then with tax returns, right? Making sure that you have to meet all the, the, the deadlines. So I would say that that can kind of bring a, a lot of stress because, um, you know, you just know that you're going to be really busy. But I guess um, on the flip side of that, um, one of the ways, I guess, or the benefit of knowing, I guess, when you're going to be busy is that you can kind of plan ahead, um, right? Like you're not, you don't, right? It's kind of not always, uh, I mean, while you might still have uh, unprecedented, unprecedented things happening, um, you kind of know when you're going to be busy. So you can kind of plan ahead um, with, um, you know, any other commitments that you might have. Um, and also just with uh, with your team, right? Um, with your team and, and everybody is kind of understanding and they're all kind of, they're all on the same page. So knowing that you're gonna have somebody there um, getting through that with you um, is really helpful. Um, and that's one of the things that I kind of like about Ingredient is that, I mean, we're, we're all here together and making sure that we all get the, uh, what needs to get done. Thanks, Christian. All right, Erica, um, what parts of your role are challenging and how do you manage through those challenges and stressors when they develop? Yeah, um, I would just say in general, um, what's challenging, um, sometimes there's barriers that are in the way in regards to being able to just get your end goal accomplished. And so whether that's a barrier from, um, like a process standpoint, there's too many, you know, approvers or people who need to sign off on things in order for them to take place. Um, or whether it's um, from a person who it has a traditional mindset and may not be as open to, you know, receiving a, a, re a recommendation or a new idea. Um, those are really the, the opportunities or the moments where I become most frustrated. Um, and so in those moments, it's really just about 
one, just taking a moment to just breathe, capture your thoughts, reflect. Um, and then I would say that um, for me, it's really important. Um, well, I'm the type of person who struggles with receiving um, no. Um, and so I don't take no on the first try, the first go around as like the final answer. I'm always looking for a way to make something possible or a way to make something happen. And so when I hear no for whatever reason, um, that's when I start utilizing my network, um, whether it is a peer um, that I can go to and say, hey, like, do you have any suggestions or, you know, trying to get buy in from like a broader group of people. So now it's not just me who thinks it's a great idea. I have like five colleagues who also think it's a great idea. And we make that, you know, approach or recommendation again for making sure that you're networking with people who potentially are in the room um, that are making that decision. And so even if I'm not physically able to be there or I'm not, you know, at that um level or whatever to be in that specific meeting for when the decisions are making are taking place i try to have like someone who will vocalize my thoughts um on my behalf in the room um to overcome some of those barriers um that i find to be most challenging so thanks erica all right and finally austin what are your thoughts yeah well for me in my current role it's really just about uh balancing different initiatives and projects. And there can be times when things fall on, you know, the due date falls on the same date. And so what I've found success in doing is just keeping an open line of communication with my manager. So making sure she's well aware of, you know, what my workload looks like and what we can do to potentially, you know, increase if I don't have enough or decrease if it's overloaded for a specific week or two weeks. And then the second, you know, piece of advice that's really worked well for me is uh, looking at my calendar and looking at what initiatives I have. And then just going ahead and blocking off times where I know I'm going to have to focus in, work on that because it's coming up. So what this does is it kind of um, assigns time for you to dive in and just work on something. And so people can schedule meetings and you don't get distracted because you know, hey, this is my time to work on this, and crank it out. So. Thanks, Austin. Thanks, Austin. All of those answers were very, very thoughtful. Um, so before we move to the second portion of tonight's event, the, the question and answer from our audience, um, I'd like to ask our panelists one final question. Um, and Erica, we're going to start with you. Um, so what is the most fascinating or interesting thing you've learned while working at Ingredion thus far? I'm going to sound really shallow, um, but it was the best thing that <laughs> I've learned um, that we, well, one, you just, because we're B2B, you don't see us on the shelf right? Like you don't see ingredion literally written on a shelf. And so when I um, interviewed, I just didn't know how many products um, we were in or how many customers we have. And so I remember going to um, Argo, one of our plants and being in um, the, the idea lab portion of um, Argo. And that's really where a lot of our research and development takes place and they're testing and trying different things out. And so um, I just remember being made aware that like my face wash, like our products are in and I'm like, oh my gosh, I really appreciate <laughs> my face wash. I talk about it all the time. Um, and so I, I, again, that sounds very shallow, but I like that I can be proud of the the company that I work for, right? And that we have, um, I'm always constantly finding out about a customer that we have that I wasn't aware of before and just, you know, the impact that we have to our, our customers and the ultimate end users, I think it's just amazing. Me too, Erica. That, that tour to Argo um, was fascinating. Austin, what are your thoughts? Well, I really wish I would have went first. So Erica definitely stole mine. Um, but you'd just be amazed about the different types of the amount of products that can be produced from a kernel of corn. Um, but, you know, aside from that, I personally like learning about different industries in some way role. You kind of learn about, you know, the logistics industry and how that impacts us and also like the export in, import industry because we are a global company. So for me, it's just, it's interesting to learn about the different industries that ingredients in and we have a hand, our hands in a lot of places. Thanks, Austin. All right, Anna, you're up. So for me, it's a little different. My mom has worked for Ingredient for 
over 25 years now, I think. So I've always known of Ingredion. I never really knew what they did because I would go to bring your kid to work days with her and I would get a bunch of treats. I just thought it was, you know, the nice thing they gave us some crackers and some Kellogg's things. But it's really interesting, I guess, along with what Austin and Erica said, just to see how much, you know, we're involved with everything that's on the shelves. And it's not even just on the shelves, it's what they come in. So it's like the, the boxes from Amazon that you're getting, that's also us. So it's just all the different functions that, you know, we get used for. It's just, it's interesting and very mind blowing sometimes. All right, and finally, Christian. Sure, so I guess everybody stole the all the interesting and cool things Ingredient makes. But um, I would say um, one of the things that I really, really uh, liked about like uh, about Ingredient and uh, I find interesting is how easy it is to kind of network uh, with an Ingredient and just to see, I mean, basically all the different functions and opportunities that are with an Ingredient, uh, talking from a career perspective, right? Like talking about all the different uh, functions that, um, are with an ingredient that you can be part of, right? You, you, we have here, a, we have HR, we have you know, supply chain, you can work in audit, you can work in accounting, right? And all those is really what brings everything, everything of that coming together is really what makes ingredient ingredient, right? And um, I thought it was coming into ingredient, I thought that was really uh, cool and interesting and just how easy it is to just, you know, um, talk to people uh, at ingredient.